These teenagers belong to a gang, the Young Skulls. In this film, we will follow the gang through an ordinary day and see what part aggression plays in the lives of its members. For aggression is not something apart from life, but is deeply interwoven with it. We will examine modern psychological theory and research that tells us where aggression comes from, how it is shaped, and what purposes it serves. Aggression is not just horsing around. Aggression is not just an emotion such as anger. No, aggression is an action taken with the purpose of inflicting harm. People may act aggressively against other people, property, or symbols. Aggression often results from a specific provocation, such as a frustration, invasion of territory, or a threat. But the nature of the triggering incident is not always clear. the gang was splashed by the car and is now retaliating. Perhaps it is a symbol of something they resent. Aggression is present in all animal species and is as much a product of evolutionary development as wings, claws, and eyes. It is present because it is indispensable for survival. Animals fight to establish a dominance hierarchy, a pecking order which determines which male has priority access to food and to females. Animals fight to protect territory. One of these fiddler crabs has invaded the territory of the other and is attacked. And animals attack other animals for food, but almost always their prey is of another species. Aggression is often expressed as a threat rather than a consummated act. Threats are often enough to decide who will back down and who will prevail. In this gang, an aggressive aura sends an intimidating message to those around it, a message that the gang is to be respected and not messed with. So you tell your Supreme, he want to shit back, he come down here, and if my boys, want, if, any of my, if any of y'all want to fuck this dude up, I got my permission. Right? I got my permission. He told me he quit, and he wearing blue angel colors. All right? I'm telling you, man. If y'all want to fuck him up, go ahead. Hey, bro, go ahead Territoriality man. plays its part in provoking human aggression. Here, a member of a competing gang, the Blue Angels, is challenged as he attempts to enter the turf of the Young Skulls. The Young Skulls grab the colors of the Blue Angels. And they'll get the colors back. But your prayers might not come back. You want it? Through the use of symbols and language, humans engage in a process of pseudo-speciation, treating the outgroup as if it were another species, treating symbolic distinctions as if they were biological ones, then acting as predators toward them. Conflicts over territory are not limited to lower-class youths. Middle-class residents of this Brooklyn neighborhood are equally willing to fight against the incursion of outsiders. More generally, any challenge to the accepted social order may trigger an aggressive response. One rule of social life is that when standing on line, it is first come, first serve. Here a confederate will ignore the rule. The violation of the rule provokes aggressive gestures and threats. I don't even know these two suckers, man. They never come dominance out, and the challenge to dominance plays a role also in human aggression. The lad sitting on the ground has challenged the hierarchy of the gang. He's just supreme now. Understand? Understand what I'm saying? You know, a punishment. I never know a skull to get on punishment. You have sold your soul to the devil. But this us. is the devil, and we are his demon. So you in hell now, and you're going to burn. 
and he must go burn. The leadership reasserts its power by forcing him to undergo a ritualized beating. It's not hard to find instances of aggression in the real world, but the problem for the psychologist is to find a way to study aggression, aggressive behavior in a precise, exact way in laboratory situations where he has some control and where the person who's the object of aggression, the target of aggression, does not actually get hurt. I wrestled with this problem for a long time. And in 1960, a simple solution occurred to me, and that is a subject could be allowed to administer a graded series of shocks to another person. I drew a set of sketches of a shock machine. It was later to be called an aggression machine. I moved on to use this machine for the study of obedience, but other investigators, Arnold Buss, for example, used uh, the machine to study aggression per se. He showed us that men will administer higher levels of shock than women. Uh, Leonard Berkowitz studied the effects of frustration and the effects of arousal, of imitation of aggressive action using this machine. I think the machine was quite important for psychology because it allowed us to study aggressive behavior in the laboratory. Of course, there are many shortcomings of this kind of study. It's somewhat sterile, it's a little bit artificial, and so we also have to turn to the real world uh, to study the dynamics of aggression. And in the real world, young males of many species engage in aggressive play. But the high arousal and competitiveness of aggressive play may easily explode into authentic aggression. Or sometimes the chance presence of an object may convert exuberance into a genuinely destructive act. Any simple object may be used as a weapon. Weapons serve as buffers. They create distance between the aggressor and his victim, and thus weaken inhibitions against aggressive action. Each member of the gang occupies a certain status, high to low, and the booze is passed around according to this hierarchy. All I hear, man, is that the dudes go to um, the MC booths. You got a pair? You got a pair? You got combats. That's why you got to go on. But the low man is nonetheless frustrated when he fails to wet his throat with even a drop. In the late 30s, a group of Yale psychologists proposed that frustration always leads to aggression and that all aggression is the outcome of some prior frustration. This frustration-aggression hypothesis has been criticized for being overstated, but it may yet have some validity. A second hypothesis concerns the displacement of aggression. When the frustrated person cannot strike back against the source of frustration, aggression will be displaced onto other objects or persons. Milgram and Shotland demonstrated in a recent experiment that frustration definitely provokes aggressive action. In this experiment, subjects come to a gift distribution center in order to receive a radio they had been promised. In a control condition, a sign on the office counter politely states that the office is temporarily closed because of illness, and the subject was to kindly pick up his radio in another room of the building. A minor inconvenience, perhaps, but no real frustration, since the radio would soon be in hand. 
Among the office furnishings, a charity display for Project Hope with several dollar bills visible through the Lucite Bank. The behavior of all subjects was observed by concealed video cameras. The second condition was identical to the first with one exception. A severe frustration was introduced. The subject was brusquely informed that he would not receive the radio that had been promised. After severe frustration, subjects broke into the charity box three times more often than in the non-frustrating condition. Frustration is more likely to produce aggression when it is perceived as illegitimate frustration, as when this girl tries to usurp the man's right to the phone without any particular justification. The frustration seems more legitimate in the case of a pregnant woman and is thus responded to with greater equanimity. Illegitimate frustration. The reason the watch isn't ready is not perceived as valid and frustration leads to a blow up. I am sorry, sir, this is not ready right now. Why not? Uh, we had something more important to do. What's more important than my watch? Sir, it's not ready. I don't care. Just give me the watch. I'll take it someplace else and get it fixed right. Off. Just give me the watch. Well, that's not company policy. I don't that's care what company policy is. I want the watch and I want it now. Legitimate frustration. The frustration is just as real, but a death in the jeweler's family makes it legitimate. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Your watch isn't ready yet. You see, the repairman had a death in his family. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, a couple of days then? Yes, sir, for certain, sir. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Sigmund Freud said that aggression is inevitable in human life. It is an instinct that can never be eradicated, but can only be channeled into more or less destructive lines. Yet modern psychology believes that its expression, shaping, and strength may well depend on social learning. Yeah, she punishes me. You know, hitting me, you know, locking me up, and all that. My father doesn't live with me. When I was a little kid, that was the last time I seen him. When I get punished, yeah. I got to be upstairs at 9 o'clock. Yeah. And I, when I get hit, I get hit with a stick. My mother used to beat me up like crazy. And they hit me every day. My father used to chase me all around the block barefoot. The child grows into the man and perpetuates the tradition of violence. And the fights among men do not resemble the sterile aggression we see in the movies. In real fights, people grapple, scrape, and hurt each other. Oh. The Gestapo's regime came back from, Ger from Germany. Back in the Nazi days, the Gestapo's one used to do the torture to the Americans. So that's what we got in our gangs, too, a Gestapo. For those who do wrong... Brutal parents may serve as models of aggression. Right. But the models may also be found in history. Here, an especially aggressive segment of the gang models itself after the infamous Gestapo. Many social psychologists think that the mass media, and television in particular, teach children to be aggressive. In an experiment carried out by Bandura and Walters, Children were shown a film of an adult who repeatedly pummeled and struck an inflatable doll. The frequency with which violence is depicted on television is very high. By the time a child has grown to adolescence, he has probably seen more than 10,000 acts of violence depicted on the TV screen.
In the second part of the experiment, the children were allowed to play with the same doll shown in the film. Children who saw the film struck the doll more often and more vigorously than a control group of children who had not seen the film. Thus, aggression shown in the mass media may serve as a model for social learning. Hey, y'all, they're taking one of our boys, man. No reason. Hey, big man, what's happening? There is a special group of people whose job is to deal with aggression that has gotten out of hand, the police. Psychologist Morton Bard has set up a program to train the police in psychological principles of intervention. When people are at each other in conflict situations, it is the police who are called upon to serve as a third party to bring that dispute to some constructive outcome. Uh, my research has been concerned with interpersonal conflict management, with providing the police with the skills and the competence to bring about these resolutions. Now, I think it should be noted that the closer and more intimate a human relationship, the more likely it is that there be an aggressive interaction. I take my bow and arrow. I take my police yeah, yeah, what, what, about, what about the police? How do you get along with the police? Oh, no, we get along the way same they get along with us, man. Yeah. Terrible. If you put the third party in the position of getting between disputing parties, so to speak, you expose that person to the most volatile of human aggressive motives. On arriving at the scene of a dispute, the very first thing that the officer uh, must do is to identify possible sources uh, or weapons of opportunity, to secure the premises, to separate the participants. Once having done that, uh, he has to then uh, ascertain the facts. He has to participate in a process of gathering information, to know how to gather the information, how to process that information, how to develop a plan about what he has gathered, and then to make a move in implementing that plan. Throughout this film, we have shown how aggression is not simply a property of an isolated person, but is interwoven with the life of a group. An experiment by Milgram measures the degree to which group pressure induces aggressive acts. Four people come to a laboratory to take part in a study on the effects of punishment on learning. The man with the mustache will administer electric shocks. He is the only real subject. The others are Confederates. He is the learner and will appear to receive electric shocks whenever he makes an error in his lesson. The shocks may vary from 15 to 450 volts. The experimenter explains that the shock actually used is to be the lowest shock level suggested by any of the three teachers on each trial. Blue. Boy. Girl. Grass. Path. Incorrect. The correct answer is blue girl. Incorrect answer. As I mentioned earlier, you three must decide the punishment to be administered. Let's try 15 volts. Okay, 15 volts. 15 volts. The two Confederates raise the shock level one step on each trial. The subject Incorrect. can hold down the shocks to 15 volts, or he can be influenced by the others. Let's try 165 volts. 165, okay. I think that's too much. The punishment administered will be the lowest level suggested by any of you three. I keep it down to 150. Mm. Incorrect. About a quarter of the subjects resist the group and hold the shock to the lowest levels on the generator. Half the subjects Incorrect. are somewhat influenced and hold the shock to intermediate levels. Another quarter completely capitulates to the group. Incorrect. 300. 300. 300. Ah! Incorrect. 330. 330. 330. Ah! Incorrect. 375. 375. White. Cloud. Horse. Rock. House. Incorrect. The correct answer is white horse. Four fifty. 450 volts.
society knows that aggression is too important to be left to laboratory subjects or to brawling adolescents. It creates special institutions for the organized infliction of harm on an enemy. Our life is, is, you know, in a way, it's kind of really rough because once we get busted, society always got that mark on us. And they never let go. See, they never can give us a break. They even scared to teach us law because they know we'll get around they gave us already, man. You know, we want to start getting a little bit of roots in society, but they don't want to give us the break. So if they don't want to give us the break, we go out there on our own and get ourselves together. That's so if they mess with us, uh -huh. we're going to scratch their eyes out. Yeah. Take my bean shooter with me. The group not only pressures its members to act aggressively, it provides justifications that excuse such aggression. Individual excuses appear more legitimate when they are accepted and ratified by the group. As psychologists, we have studied some of the origins and conditions of human aggression. But in the end, it is not enough that we understand. We must use our knowledge.